Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Alex and today I'm going to upgrade my keyboard, the GK64XS, the Bluetooth keyboard and the budget keyboard. This is a custom made keyboard and it costs about less than 150 USD and I will place the price list right over here so you can take a look and pause the video if you need to. So are you guys ready? Let's go! This keyboard comes with a plastic case and a steel plate. The plate looks nice, it's white in color, which I prefer, and it looks quite durable. I was also thinking to upgrade my plastic case into an aluminum one, but I like the sound profile of a plastic case more when I watch a lot of YouTube video. For its price, this keyboard is amazing. The plastic is not the cheap kind of plastic but very durable. I changed my stabilizer to the Everglide Pendant Plate Mount Stabilizer version 3. To reduce the rattle, I lube them with Crytox 205 Grid 0 and Dielectric Grids. There are some rattle but I am satisfied with my first build. But no worries, I will fix the rattle in this video by doing some bandaid mode. The switches that were used were Gatron Silent Brown. I looped the switches with Crytox 205 Grade 0 and filmed them with TX Switch Film version 2. These switches are not bad for its price, but it is too scratchy for my taste. I personally feel that the tactile bump on this switch is too unnoticeable. I think it's because of the stem leg bump on this switch is not as tall as other switches such as Duroc T1. Here is the sound test of my keyboard before the upgrade. Today, I'm going to upgrade my Gatron Salem Brown into the C3 Banana Split. I was considering whether to get Gatron Black Ink, Tangerine, Banana Split, Novel Key Cream, Gatron Milky Yellow, or Duroc Palm. To test the switches, I bought each individual switches for extra 5 cents and tried them one by one. Here is sound test for you guys. Enjoy. As I mentioned, I chose Banana Split. The Banana Split has an actuation force of 62 gram. Although it has the same actuation force with Tangerine and Duroc Palm, I personally feel that Banana Split is heavier than them, but the actuation force is perfect for me. I also like the color of Banana Split. First, I open the switch with a switch opener.
Next, I put the stem and the bottom housing into my lubing station for ease of lubing. For the spring and the top housing, I will put in a container. Do it again for the rest of the lubing station. Next, I take a small amount of Crytox 205 grade 0 to my brush. I transfer half of the lube to one of the slider rails and the other half to the other slider rails. Next, I evenly spread the lube on both rails by stroking my brush until I feel that I have spread the lube evenly on both sides. I like to use the remaining of the lube on my brush to lube the outside and the inside of the pillar and also the leaf. Skip the leaf if you are lubing a tactile switch as it will remove the tactileness of the switch. After finish the bottom housing, I back loop the spring. Even though back lubing is not as good as lubing the spring manually, I'm too tired to manually loop the spring. To do that, I put all the spring into a ziplock bag, drop some Crytox GPL 105, and zip the bag with some air inside. Shake the bag for 1 minute. And then rub the spring to ensure the loop spread evenly. To loop the stem, I take a little bit of Crytox 2050 to my brush. I transfer half of the loop to one of the stem sliders and the other half to the other stem sliders. Next, I deposit the remaining of the loop to the back and to the front of the stem. After that, I evenly spread my loop across the stem. For linear switch, I also loop the legs of the stem. I like to finish it off by looping around the pillar of the stem. The last part that I normally loop is the top housing. Not many people want to do this but I can slightly feel the difference when I don't loop the top housing. To loop it, I just take a small amount of lube, transfer the lube to all four sides and spread the lube evenly. Finally, after repeating all the steps 63 times, I can assemble back the switches. First, I put the TX film to the bottom housing, then the spring, and then the stem, and lastly, the top housing. And we're done! Before doing the bandaid mode, I need to remove the steps from the plate. After removing the steps, it's good to remove any remaining loops on the plate so that the electrical tape can stick to the plate. I normally just wash it with soap and water. After washing and drying the plate, I take a small piece of electrical tape and paste it to the step slot. Do the same for the rest of the slot. After I'm done, I put the stabilizer back to the slot and test them. It is important to make sure that the stabilizer don't have any rattle because it is troublesome to fix it once I put the rest of the switches back to the plate. Finally, I'm done with the mod. For your information, I changed the spacebar into Gatoran Black Ink to provide a talkier sound spacebar. 
So now, enjoy the pictures of putting the keycap back to the keyboard. After hours of upgrading my keyboard, here is the sound test. So, here it is, the final look of the keyboard. If you enjoyed this kind of video, let me know in the comment down below. Don't forget to subscribe, like this video, and turn on your notification down below. My name is Alex, and I see you in the next video. Bye-bye!